So a little while ago, I made a video on players that are most likely to be traded in the offseason. And there's this one little detail that I just didn't acknowledge when I was making this video. And it has to do with one of the biggest players in the trade market. And I know it's going to drive this fan base extremely crazy because, well, each and every offseason, this fan base believes that somehow, some way, they're finally going to get themselves a superstar and they're finally going to be a dominating power in the East. But guys, before we get to the content, I just want to let you know, I'm giving away PS5s on this channel, my NFL channel, my Twitter, and my Instagram. The links to the other stuff are in the description down below. But if you want to enter for a chance to win a PS5 with the disc tray on this channel, all you have to do is be subscribed and turn on my notifications. I'm going to go through the list of people that are in my Nodi gang and just choose one of them to win a PS5. And that's about it. Now that we got all that out of the way, cue the intro. Mic check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? Guys, I this one is going out to all the Knicks fans out there because, bro, I'm a Laker fan and I've been waiting for the Knicks to be a dominant power again for 22 years, maybe even like 23 years back when I, and that was back when I was a four year old. You know what I mean? And I don't count 2014 as a year where they were dominant. That was like when a average to above average Knicks team played to their peak and to their max potential. I'm talking about a truly dominant team in New York. And it just drives me nuts that there hasn't been such a situation. It seems like they're always getting very close, but yet they just do something stupid to shoot themselves in the foot. Most recently, trading away Kristaps Porzingis for Dennis Smith Jr. And of course, when Dennis Smith Jr. comes to the Knicks, he magically becomes a shell of his former self and plays to the worst of his whole abilities. And ugh, I don't even want to get to it because I was a huge Dennis Smith Jr. fan back in 2017. I thought he was supposed to be better than De'Aaron Fox and Lonzo Ball, but I guess whenever you go to New York, just, I don't know, your talent starts to die out. Hell, even Kevin Knox, he started out his career fairly decently, and then he just regressed like crazy. Now he's beginning to look a little bit like a draft bust, and I don't even think it's his fault. I just feel like the Knicks just don't know how to put these players in the best positions to succeed. Well, I saw multiple trade rumors that have to do with the New York Knicks, and one of them I think is a little bit less feasible than the other. And I'm going to go with the less feasible first, and we're going to build up to the one that makes sense. The first one that doesn't make sense, and this is just a rumor, I reiterate, is that the Knicks could potentially trade for Paul George. And now look, I don't think the Clippers are gonna trade Paul George. You know what I mean? I feel like they had to make a choice between Doc Rivers and Paul George, and they pretty much said, okay, we're gonna cut Doc Rivers and we're gonna keep Paul George. And I, again, a lot of people don't agree with me on this, and I know I may potentially sound like the Alex Jones of sports by saying this, but a big part of me believes that the reason why Doc Rivers got fired was because Paul George used to date his daughter. And I felt like as the playoffs went on, you know, in the first round of the playoffs, Paul George went up against Seth Curry. Seth Curry's currently engaged to Doc Rivers' daughter. And I guess that may have brought up some stuff in Paul George's head and that may have resulted in him just playing horrifically. But I digress because, again... Steve Ballmer said that there are other reasons why Doc Rivers got fired. For example, he neglected a huge analytic that showed that the Clippers were better with Avica Zubak on the floor over Montrez Harrell, where they were minus 30 net rating with Montrez Harrell on the floor, whereas they were plus 10 with Avica Zubak on the floor. But the only reason this makes sense at all for the Clippers is the Knicks have seven first rounders in the next four drafts. And if you think about the amount of capital the Clippers gave up, to bring in Paul George, which is five first round draft picks. And then considering the fact that Paul George could be a free agent next year, if he decides to opt out with Kawhi Leonard, if the Clippers just wanna sell on the idea of Paul George and Kawhi Leonard as a duo, then this could potentially make some sense. Now, the likelihood of this happening in my head is like two out of 10, because again, 
Kawhi Leonard really made the push for Paul George to be his running mate. And I don't think that the Clippers are just going to give up on Kawhi Leonard and Paul George so soon, especially because a huge reason why the Clippers lost in the first round was mainly due to continuity, in my opinion. Now, look, there's a bunch of more stuff I could tell you about Paul George, how Paul George reportedly annoyed his teammates with a post-game sermon that said that we just got to play better after being horrible himself, after many of his teammates that were role players thinking that they were just as good as Paul George. You know, there's a bunch of other locker room stuff that could contribute to the fact that the Clippers decide to trade Paul George. But at the end of the day, I don't think they're going to trade him. At least I don't. Maybe a Clipper fan feels differently and maybe they could recoup some of the draft picks that they lost by originally trading for Paul George a year ago. But I think the more feasible rumor, and maybe both of these rumors are true, but this second rumor makes a lot more sense because according to Mark Berman, who came out with the first rumor about Paul George, Sam Presti is reportedly looking for a first round pick and a young prospect from the Knicks in exchange for Chris Paul. Now, according to that source, that young player is preferably Kevin Knox. Now, I don't know how credible this source is, but according to Brandon Scoop B. Robinson on Twitter, which by the way, this is one of those Twitter accounts with 4,000 following and 25,000 followers. So right off the bat, I'm way less likely to trust this page just based off of that. But regardless, I felt like there's some truth to this rumor and I'll tell you why. The Knicks have a deal lined up for Chris Paul, and this includes Kevin Knox, Frank Nilakina, and draft picks. And this is consistent with the Mark Berman report because the Thunder do want Kevin Knox, and it's even more consistent because there is a first rounder, but I don't know about draft picks, you know, like in plural, and they're also throwing in Frank Nilakina. Now, Here's the thing. The reason why I believe this could happen is one, Chris Paul's always wanted to play for New York. What better place for him to go for his career to die than the New York Knicks? But on top of that, this is by far the most New York Knicks deal of all time. I mean, of course, why not just bundle up a bunch of assets and trade it for a 35 year old point guard who is a Hall of Famer that his best years are behind him, who is also owed an extraordinary amount of money within the next two years. It just sounds like something that the New York Knicks would do. So that's the reason, that's the only reason why I think this might be true, because first of all, we have multiple sources saying it, but second of all, dude, this sounds like something that the New York Knicks would 100% do. Like, with all due respect, we're talking about a team that literally flunked 20-plus NBA drafts, and right when they finally hit on a draft prospect, they decided to trade him two years later for Dennis Smith freaking Jr. So yes, the only reason I'm saying that this could potentially happen is because of how horrific the New York Knicks front office is in making deals. But that being aside, there is a chance that this is just a rumor and it's going to stay at that, but I had to bring it to your attention. But bear in mind, New York Knicks fans, you guys actually have some hope this year because not only do you guys have a bunch of young players, but you have a bunch of draft capital as well. And you're once again going to be in the top 10 in the NBA draft lottery, and hopefully you don't mess this draft pick up. Now, let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about this rumor, if you think it's going to happen or you don't think it's going to happen. I personally think the Chris Paul trade could happen just because of how inept the front office is. I would be so surprised if they somehow swung trades for both Paul George and Chris Paul. So I only think they're probably going to acquire Chris Paul. And at the very worst, he's going to be a high-end expiring contract next year that they could possibly trade. But who are we kidding, man? The Knicks just want an excuse to sell seats. If there's even any seats to sell next year by bringing in a star of some sort. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about this rumor. Aside from that, I'm your boy, The Flight Mike. And I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.